You good? All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Gieske from Hyde Music in Appleton, and it's going to be an awesome day. We have a really cool uh, friend of mine here uh, that's going to walk you through some uh, some introduction to bass. Uh, she is a teacher in the Appleton area school system. Uh, her name is Rachel Richards, and uh, three words that I have I describe to, to describe Rachel are uh, caring. She's very passionate, and she's a very patient lady. So, Rachel Richards, everyone. Thank you so much. You said walking you through. I was like, yeah, walking the base, right? Walking the base. All right. So, hi everybody. I'm Rachel Richards. I teach uh, strings in the Appleton Area School District, and one of my favorite things to play is the bass. Now when we say bass, people get all kinds of pictures in their mind. Sometimes they think electric bass or bass guitar, or maybe they think tuba bass if they come from a polka background, but the bass really has many, many names. The biggest thing to remember about it is that even though it's large, it's really not that intimidating. Some of the different names that you might have heard are upright bass, because we play it upright. The ground holds it for us. It's really not that heavy. Another name might be the double bass, and that is because basses often doubled the cello line or the bottom line of an organ part um, back when they needed some more support. Maybe you've heard stand-up bass or um, contrabass because of the very low range. Another great name is a string bass, and whatever name you use for it, it is always the bass because it is the foundation of the ensemble. So this is considered a member of the bowed strings family because we do use a bow to play the bass, even though you might see somebody plucking it pretty often. We're gonna get into bows in just a little bit, but first I wanted to talk about how to maybe hold the bass, pick up the bass, or even carry the bass. Oftentimes when I'm teaching at school, I see uh, families trying to figure out how to maneuver this big thing, or they'll make jokes about how they need a bigger car. <laughs> Um, I can assure you, you can fit a bass in the back of a little VW Beetle. As a good friend of mine once told me, that's how she carted her bass around. First of all, the bass is hollow and it can be adjusted. Now the bass that I'm holding at the moment is a three quarter size bass. This is what most adults would play or students that are high school age when they reach a certain height. They do come in fractional sizes, so you can get what is considered a half size bass or a quarter size bass. Most beginning bass students in maybe fourth or fifth grade would carry a quarter size bass. It's not, not quite as large as this one. When we're moving the bass around, it's important to know that our basses are hollow. That's why they're so light, but also very, very fragile. We have a bridge on the front of our bass that holds our strings up and also bridges the sound waves um, and vibrations into the body. The back of the bass is often curved. However, this bass is actually more of a flat back bass. And for those two very good reasons, when we lay the bass down and we pick the bass up, we always want to protect the front and the back of the bass. I'm going to keep my left hand on the neck of my bass, and I'm taking my right hand and I'm going to place it right here on the side of the boat. I never want to carry it using the fingerboard or by the bridge or by this piece down here called the tail piece. Always on the body, that is where you can have the best grip and it's the best support. And I usually walk my base down where I'll just very, very gently and slowly lay it on its side and then bring it down like so. And now I'm hands-free with my base. This is a good position to carry, um, to actually cover my base, put the case on it, and then when I lift the base back up again, I'm going to do the opposite um, motion. So I'm going to put my hand right on the body of the base, take my left hand, and pick it up by the neck until I can walk it up and set it upright again. Now you may have noticed that my base has a little metal thing on the bottom. It's called an end pin. And we use that end pin to adjust the height of the base. Even though this is a three quarter size base, it can still grow taller and it can still make it shorter. When we're transporting the base, we wanna make sure that that end pin is in. And um, when I'm standing up to play the base, the proper height is where your left hand and your thumb are about eye level on the back of the neck 
and my right hand, which will hold the bow or pizzicato, reaches right about two thirds of the way up between the bridge and the fingerboard. That way, when I'm holding my bow, my bow is going to land right in what I like to call the tone zone. That's where we produce our best sound. When I'm doing something called pizzicato or plucking, my hand usually goes right about here, maybe about five or six inches up, a little closer to the middle of the string. So that's how you find the proper bass height. We don't want the bass to be too low because then we won't be able to bow in that tone zone, but we don't want it too high because we'll put stress and strain on our left arm. And this is about where my bass would land on me. Now, when I'm holding the bass, you might notice that it's cradled right up against my side. I have my left foot forward just a little bit, and my right foot is holding the majority of my weight. And I bring the bass in to my body, and my body supports the bass. That way my hands can be most free. We don't want to stand behind the bass because it makes it a little bit more difficult to reach. However, there are bassists that sit to play on tall stools and will play basses a little bit more like a cello. And that is definitely okay. It is whatever is most comfortable and allows us the full range of the instrument. I prefer to stand. That's what I've been doing for a very, very long time. But you can decide for yourself which method you prefer. Okay, now we have our base set up. We have our legs supporting. It's into our body. Let's talk a little bit about the strings. Our bowed strings have four strings traditionally. We are talking about violin, viola, cello, and bass. Once we get into um, more advanced playing, you might find electric instruments have multiple strings. But the ones that use the bow typically have four. On the bass, the strings are opposite of the violin, which you'll be learning about next week. The names of the strings are G, the one furthest from my thumb when I place my thumb on the fingerboard. So this is the G string. Then we have the D string right next to it. We're gonna go move over to the third string. This is our A string. And our final string is the E string. That is our lowest sounding note on the bass. I like to remember the names of my strings by using a simple phrase, get dad an egg. I don't know why you would get dad an egg, but my dad really liked eggs, so that helped him out a lot, and it helped me remember the names. So get, G, dad, D, and A, egg, G. Get dad an egg. G, D, A, and E. For tuning these notes, you can use a tuner that clips to your bridge, or you can use an app on your phone but we want to make sure that we have a G, a D, an A, and an E. So if you have a bass with you right now and you would like to try this out a little bit, we're going to pluck some notes. In orchestra, we actually call it pizzicato. It's an Italian term that means to pluck. And to get our plucking hand ready, we're actually going to hold our right hand out in front of us with our palm facing the floor. And we're going to take our thumb and place it on the side of the fingerboard. This is what the fingerboard looks like. It's this black piece of wood that's curved underneath our strings. We're just gonna set it there. We're not gonna hide it all the way underneath. We want our hand to be relaxed, but we just set it right there and we reach over. So we're gonna pluck four G's together. And in between each note, I want you to set your finger back on the string before you pluck the string. There's no need to pull it just rub the string to the side. You put a little bit of weight in your finger and pull. Uh, rub it. So let's do four G's. Here we go. G, 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 G. And notice how I set my finger in between to get a nice clear sound. If I don't set it, we get a much bigger boomy sound. And there are times where that is very appropriate. All right, let's pluck four Ds together. Here we go. Place your first finger on the D string, and we're going to try it four times. Ready, go. D, 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 D. And hopefully you're remembering to set your finger in between each note. 
Now let's try the A string. This was the an, or the get dad an egg, the A string. It's the third string, and it's closer to our thumb. Here we go. A, set, A, set, A, set, A. Very good. Okay, now we're going on to the E string. This one you'll notice needs a little bit more um, oomph, oomph, or emphasis as you pluck because it is such a low string and sometimes it's hard for people to hear. So let's try that E string. Ready? Go. E, 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 E. All right, nice work everybody. So I'm gonna teach you a very, very basic bass line. And you'll find that the bass is one of those instruments that crosses all cultures and all styles of music. What we're gonna do right now is a bass line for a fiddle tune. And you'll be surprised at how easy this really is. Now, if I had my fiddle here, I'd play that for you too, but you wouldn't really wanna hear that. <laughs> all right, so here is a basic bass line for a song called Boil Them Cabbage Down. And we're gonna start with our finger on the D. So remember, our palm is facing towards the floor and our thumb is on the fingerboard and our pointer finger is on the D string. And we're going to play two Ds with rests in between. It'll sound like this, D, rest, D, rest. Then we're gonna to go to the G string. If you remember G, get, that's our first one, the furthest away from us. And we're gonna play two of those. G, rest, G, rest. Let's put those together. Two Ds, two Gs with rests in between. One, two, here we go. D, rest, D, rest, G, rest, G, rest. Nice job. Okay, now we go back to that D again, and we're gonna go down to the A this next time. So we're gonna play two Ds. The D is like our home note right now. Here we go. D, D. Now let's go to the A string and play two of those. A, rest, A, rest. Okay, so let's recap a little bit. We started on the D, played it two times. Then we went to the G string, and played that two times. Back to the D for two notes and down to the A for two notes. I'll say it as we play it. Ready, go. D, rest, D, rest. G, rest, G, rest. D, D, now the A. That's the first part of our bass line for a fiddle tune. Now to finish it off, we're going to go back and do what we just did, but end a little different way. So here's what it will sound like. D, D, back to G. And this time we're gonna spell dad. So it was a D, A, and then D, D. Two Ds because dads are awesome, right? And if you're doing this, you should play for them on Father's Day. All right, so here's our fiddle tune. Baseline, violin, cabbage down, all together. One, two, here we are. D, rest, D, G, G, D, down to the A, to the D, G, D, A, D, D. And now you have baseline for your very first song. Good job. Okay, now, if all we ever played were four notes, we would have it made. But there are a lot more notes to be found on the bass, and we can find those notes by changing the length on the string. So if you're looking at the bass, I just want you to use your imagination for a moment. Imagine that the string is a specific length. Our string makes contact here, this is called the nut, and it connects next down to the bridge, but it continues on to the tailpiece. But the points of contact really are the bridge and the nut. 
At this actual length, this string will make the sound of a G. If I made it shorter, the string ha would have to vibrate much faster, which would raise the pitch. This is where the math and science piece comes into playing a musical instrument. So I'm going to take my finger on my left hand, and I'm going to put it on a spot on the string. Any old spot, no specific place, but I'm going to make it short. And now my string is making contact between my first finger, which is pl um, putting weight on the string and pressing it into the fingerboard, and down at the bridge. This is the sound it now makes. If I take my finger away, if I put my finger back on, and I'll take it away. So the length of the string really controls the sound we're making. You can have all kinds of fun with that. In order to set my hand up for those notes, what I'm going to do is just basically take, basically, take my left hand and put it out, and I'm gonna make a C. And you'll notice that my thumb is directly across from my second finger when I make my C. And I'm going to take that hand and bring it to the neck of the bass. Now, right now, we're not going to worry about exactly where it's placed. Most beginning bass players will have markings on their fingerboard that their teacher has placed to help them find the note. But a good rule of thumb is that we want it to be about eye level with our eyes. And that's where we would make a note called an F sharp on the D string. So now we're going to go on the D string for a moment. And I'm going to number my fingers. This is finger number one two, three, and four. And you will notice, I'm gonna to turn to the side a little bit, that when I brought my hand in, my thumb went to the back of the neck. Now, we don't wanna have a bass guitar thumb when we play the upright bass. We want our thumb to be a little bit more towards the back center of the neck. And I'm gonna set my first finger down on the D string, and my second finger, where there's a little gap in between the two, my third finger goes along for the ride, and my pinky, presses here. All four fingers are on the D string. If you've ever been to a circus, maybe you want to think about it as walking a tightrope. All fingers go on the same string, all fingers working together, thumb stays on the back of the neck, and we press the string down onto the fingerboard. If you have enough weight in your fingers, you'll hear a beautiful sound that rings and vibrates. If your fingers don't have enough weight and you're just setting them on there, you're going to get a sound that's like a thud. And it, it really doesn't do much there because the string doesn't vibrate like it should. So if you're getting that sound, just add more weight. I'll turn a little so you can see my fingers. Press them down slowly until you get that ring. Then you have the right amount of weight in your fingers. You don't need to overdo it. We don't want to choke the poor bass. It'll be okay. Although you might see that you get lines in your fingers, and that just means that you're a musician now. So lines are a good thing. Eventually, your fingers will callous, and they'll be a lot easier. So that's how we make a new note on a bass. Okay, I'm gonna stop for just a moment so you can have a little bit of a break there with your bass. And I'm gonna talk about the bow. This is something that we haven't really covered yet but you've heard me refer to the bass as a bowed string instrument. On our bass, we have a bridge which curves our strings so that we can play with a bow. Now the basses have two different types of bows. We have what we call a French style bow. And you'll notice that the frog, this is called a frog, is more of a rectangle. That's the French style bow. This is the style of bow hold that I use. Um, I started as a violinist first, but um, eventually migrated over to the bass, and it was the easiest bow hold for me to transfer over to. The other style of bow is the German bow. And if you're not sure which one you want to try or which one you want to use, I suggest talking with your bass teacher um, or somebody who knows a lot about the bass that can help you decide what's going to work best for you. But the German bow frog is a much bigger, and the way that we hold this one is uh, a little different because we hold it underneath the bow. In the French bow, we hold on top of the bow. 
It does change the way that we play a little bit. The bow is made up of a few different components. Most bow sticks are made out of fiberglass, carbon fiber, or wood. Wooden bows are really, really lovely. They're very fragile, but they produce fantastic sounds. Fiberglass or carbon fiber are more durable bows. Um, they're a little bit light, a little lighter. Uh, but basically, you try the bows and you pick the one that you like and the one that gives you the sounds that you need. Most bows will have, actually every bow will have a screw on the end that allows us to tighten the bow and loosen the bow. If you're playing bass for the very first time and you pull the bow out of your case and it looks something like this, where the bow hairs are really loose and floppy, it just means that they're not under tension. And that is the way to properly store a bow when we are not using it. We want to make sure that the tension is off of the strings and the stick. This screw allows us to bring more tension to the bow when we're ready to play. So I'm going to turn the screw here so it looks like my bow has enough tension. We don't want to over tighten. We want to make sure we have a smile in our bow. It means it's happy. It'll play lots of notes for us. And uh, today we're not going to really talk about how to hold the bow or play with the bow, but I want you to experience what it sounds like and what it looks like when we use the bow. Um, I have bow hairs, which are often used from the tail of a horse. And I'm not going to touch the bow hair because we don't want to get hand oils in there. But it's very appropriate to put rosin on your bow. There are many different kinds of rosins out there. Um, depending on what you like to play, but this is one very popular rosin. It's called Pops Rosin, and rosin is made from tree sap. It's very, very soft, and I would normally put it on the bow hairs up and down just to add a little something to it so it grabs the string better. This is what it would sound like on the bass, rosined up. And you notice I put the bow in that tone zone we talked about way at the beginning of this. Here's our G, get, dad, D, and here's our A, and our E for egg. The angle of my bow controls what string I'm playing on. So that is what our bass sounds like with a bow. Now, if my bow does not have rosin, this German bow does not have rosin, you might hear something like this. There's nothing really happening. So that rosin is a very important piece of what we need. Okay, so we have covered how to pick up the bass set down the base. We've talked about how to hold the base. And if we go back just a little bit, we want the base, remember, to rest against our body. We should be very comfortable with it. This should not hurt when we play. We've discussed the different names of the strings on our phrase, get dad and egg, get dad and egg, G-D-A-E. And we've talked about a fiddle tune that we played boil them cabbage down with our bass line. So let's review that bass line really quickly here. And see if you can remember what our starting pitch was. If you're thinking it's D, you're correct. So we're gonna take our pizzicato, plucking, place our thumb just on the side of the fingerboard, and we're going to try our bass line and see if we can remember it. It was all of what, maybe 20 minutes ago? Okay, here we go, two Ds. Two G's, two D's, down to the A, back to D, up to the G, down to the dad, D, A, D, D. And we talked about pressing that finger onto the string before we pluck. Nice job with that one. You just, this is great. Bass is so great. I love it. Okay. Then we talked a little bit about how our bass has more than just those four notes by putting our fingers on the string. Don't worry so much about where you put your fingers just yet. 
just get comfortable bringing your hand to the neck. So remember, we opened up that arm, we made our C, our second finger went across from our thumb, and we placed our thumb on the back of the neck. No bass guitar thumbs allowed. We keep it right in the back there. And then we pressed our fingers onto the string. You can do the D string if you want. You can do the G string. You can do A or E. And I did not mention this, but I think it's really good to know. When we put our fingers on the bass, um, the bass notes are laid out in alphabetical order. So the more fingers we put down, or the higher we go on the neck, the higher our notes go. For example, if this is the D, and I add my first finger to the D string, remember one, two, three, four, first finger, the next note in the alphabet is E, A, B, C, D, E, this is an E. We do have another E though, right? This really, really low one. But if you're reading music, you would see that they're in different places on the staff. The higher we go in the staff, the higher we go on the bass. So here's our E. If I were to put my four fingers down, I'm gonna get a note called an F. It's technically an F sharp, but it's the next note in our alphabet. What do you think is going to come after F? If you thought G, you were right. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, which is our G string. Here's our G. And in music, we only have our seven letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So after we finish our G, we get to go to the next note, which basically we're start, basically, there I go again, we're starting with an A. Here's our A, and then B, and then C and D, and all the way up. So there are many, many notes on the bass. I hope that this brief introduction into the bass has encouraged you to explore a lot of different options and um, gotten you excited about playing such a versatile instrument. Uh, we didn't talk about all the different ways that you could play it, but there are certainly, if you can think about it, you can, you can play it. There are certainly many different things you can get involved in. You can play in a rock band, you can play in a polka band, an orchestra. Um, I, there's a bass ukulele, you could play in a ukulele band. You can accompany choirs, you can play by yourself. Um, just getting involved in music is an adventure and a journey that's gonna take you in a lot of different directions. And uh, I wanna just say, you're gonna get out of it what you put into it. So the more you play, the more you practice, the more you enjoy and the more you share, the more you're going to love it and the directions it takes you. Three big things about music, use it for communication. Even though we can't be together right now, this is a great way to communicate with friends. Um, make sure and, and connect, so communicate. You can use it to connect, stay connected, and you can use it to cope. So if you're going through some difficult times and you wanna um, give her, your mind a little break, pick up your instrument and just play. Well, I think that's about it. If you'd like to hear a little bit, um, I will walk us out of here. All right, everybody, thanks for sticking around. Keep playing that music, have some fun, ask questions, be curious and listen all the time. But most importantly, have fun. Oh gosh, was 